Okay, my friends, I told you we were going to get serious as we went forward, and we are right now, because I've been showing these mud fossils for many years now, and it will be a big deal, so what? Who cares? Well, this is a goose. That's a goose's head. This is my buddy Caesar, and there's the feather patterns, and I've been showing these, and I've been saying that they were caused by a great saltwater hot flood. Now, I just came to the realization of the hot water recently, but I had read Velikovsky many years ago, and he explained this, and I never really thought much about it until just basically recently. So then I went back to the biblical accounts, because Velikovsky is very, he went to everywhere in the world, not just the Bible, he went to all the cultures that were around the world and looked at their ancient inscriptions and papyruses and carvings and statues and monuments and all that stuff, and they all had the same story. 1500 BC, we were literally almost impacted by Venus which caused all kinds of world havoc and it's going to be totally explained in Genesis. It's just exactly there, word for word almost. I was stunned that there's so much detail here that I just never missed, I never, I missed it all. Velikowski, when I reread him and then I came back and looked at Genesis, it's the same exact identical story. I'm going to lay it out for you right now. All right, now this is this is Noah's story about how the flood happened, and there was a seven-day interval between the time God told Noah, "Get yourself ready, because in seven days I'm closing this case." Now listen to this. Noah was five hundred years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Chapter six. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Remember that, for he is flesh. All right? The, the gods were not flesh and blood creatures. Apparently they could put themselves into a flesh and blood body, but they were spiritual creatures. It appears to me, he said, because their bodies are flesh. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they... Two different instances of the giants. There was giants in the earth in those days, literally the earth. Jesus said the earth is a body and a corpse. And it is. So th there was giants in the earth and then after that, exact words, you have to go back and listen to this again to be positive that you're picking up the meaning. Because there's so much meaning. That I just fluffed it away. I just thought, you know, I just never even considered it because you have a mindset that makes you just glaze over things. Now my mindset understands these things were possible. Let's re-examine them. And now it's, it's stunning, the detail. So let's keep going. They bear children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. All flesh had corrupted his way, which was peace and love and gentleness and kindness, charity, 
and and this is we're back in that same position again there's just violence everywhere there's hatred there's there's discrimination there's you know this it's it's a real mess the world is right now i mean i don't care it's very very hard to discount that things from when i was a kid things have changed a lot and people's hearts have hardened that's my feeling but maybe i'm wrong who knows let's just keep going here and god said unto noah the end of all flesh is come before me flesh for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold i will destroy them with the earth make thee an ark of gopher wood rooms shalt thou make in the ark and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch and this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. With lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth, to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven. And everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh. Now, I want to say something here. Now, I, I know these words were written in the Bible that everything would only Noah would survive and there, and there is a lot of other stories in other cultures that say there was a, a family that the only one family survived and they had all different names for them um, Ducali and Pirina and all kinds of different things and, and other cultures had very very similar stories now I look at this and I say yeah I have a hard time with that because after the flood I'm sure there were still giants here and they may have found their way up into the mountains and everything. Because even later in the Bible, it says that they went into the land of uh, some area and they, the giants were huge and they were like grasshoppers compared to the giants. Now, that was way later than this. The flood happened and later they went in to take over these lands. I believe that's the case. Again, I am not a scholar in this area. I, and people say, oh, you're just a cherry picker. You pick and choose. Well, yes. I can't, I don't know every single deal, uh, detail, but the things that I see that support the things that I'm saying, I talk about them. The things that I see that support, the, that don't support them, I talk about that too. Just like I said, I can't agree necessarily that all flesh on the earth died except Noah and his family. I cannot agree with that necessarily. I don't, you know, I, I can't discount it. And Velikovsky says that after the flood, huge amounts of, of diverse groups of, of species appeared. So we'll look at his statements in a minute, but this is what Genesis says. And then it's going to talk about the deep being all broken up. Hold on a second. All right, now, this is where Noah is just and his family have just been shut into the ark, and they're ready to go here. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail. And the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth. Both of fowl and of cattle and of beast. And of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And every man all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land, died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive. I thought I have a little bit of difficulty with that, but I can't completely dispute it. Okay, I want you to listen to this carefully because this is exactly what Velikovsky reported. Listen now. The male and the female, 
as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days. After seven days, which was the approach of Venus towards Earth, it was getting hotter and hotter and hotter, brilliant and brilliant and brilliant, and then the impact created this enormous catastrophe. So don't forget, after seven days, that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. Exactly what Velikovsky said. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up. All the fountains of the great deep broken up. And that is because of the impact of the two spheres almost colliding and the earth being wrenched and uh, crushed down like you'd crush a ball of tin foil and in that crushing event extreme amounts of heat are given off and then also all the volcanoes on earth erupted at the same time from this erup uh, and this was all recorded when I read to you what Velikovsky said it's identical to what this is saying and the windows of heaven were opened and the, and the windows of heaven were opened because the impact of Venus's atmosphere into our atmosphere fused oxygen to hydrogen and took all the oxygen out of our atmosphere almost and turned it into water. The hydrogen and oxygen recombined and turned into water. And then they couldn't even start fires after this because there was almost no oxygen. And these are the things that were recorded. That's why I say I can't necessarily say that everybody was wiped off the face of the earth. Somebody came up with this story when they wrote the Bible, and I don't think it's relating to the original stories that were written by the, the original spectators that saw this happen. They were people that recorded these events. So I can't say, obviously, if they recorded the events, they didn't die in these events. I can't, I, I don't think. <laughs> the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. In the selfsame day entered Noah, and Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They, and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth. And the waters increased and bare up the ark. And it was lift up above the earth. All right, I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It's very interesting. And it was forty days of rain, continuous basically rain. And huge flooded all the mountains and everything. They claim everything was killed. Every living thing was killed. Um... And um, then the, it, the waters lasted on the earth 150 days. And then the earth, it says, swallowed the waters back up. Now, that, I, I believe in the Quran it says that, or somewhere it says that the earth took the water back in. And, and it, it did. Somehow they, all the water, the, these were in a watery situation. So all these died in floods. And I have, uh, hold on. There was creatures here our size. This is a human lung. And you see how flat that is? The flatness here tells you this basically was died flat like this. It separates on the fascia planes because of the wet, boiling waters. Same thing with this. It died flat. That's why this side has no articulation. This side is perfect. Feathers and everything. And I have a ton of this stuff. I mean, I have so much of this. It's just crazy and I believe I am in a specific area here because all these were right on the surface I didn't dig for any of these to speak of they were you know a couple of them just very very barely out, out of the edge of the dirt and um, so they're all on the surface why how could that be this didn't happen that long ago Velikovsky says 1500 BC and they're just rocks we always thought they were just rocks that's not a rock that is a lung. And it's been DNA tested and certified, and that's where the heart was. In the, it's a left human lung. That's where the depression of the heart is. And that is flat as a pancake. And this is what they call a pleura. And all, all collagens 
which is membranes and, and skin and all those tissues like that, the, the, the layering that separates things. It's, it's a certain type of collagen. That stuff there turned the mud fossils into mud fossils, like even this bone. The, 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 the membranes have a certain type of chemistry that in the waters of this particular flood, they made everything else separate. The flesh boiled off primarily. That's why we had all this red, muddy clays everywhere. That's, that's the flesh. That's literally the flesh boiled off. And the leftovers are the rocks. These are the organs. Some bones. I have bones here that are just absolutely <laughs> just shaking at the lungs. This particular lung is this one here is almost like perfect. This one here is completely eroded down. Even all the alveoli are empty. There's still some red bloods down in there. Iron oxides. And that's the other thing they don't understand. Iron oxides is red blood. And black blood, the, the hematite and magnetite. And uh, anyway, it is this is a lot for us to re consider and these are the things that we want to talk about and I'm going to talk to show you what Velikovsky had to say about Venus's approach for seven days the impact of the atmospheres created huge balls of fire in the atmosphere in the skies and that was where you have the Triassic rock with a red bed gray clay black cap and I have that with human footprints in the middle of it. I have I, I did videos on it the other day. We have to get into the meaning of this. I've been 10 years showing it and now it's time to talk about the meaning because I've been I've been ready to do this for quite a while to talk about the meaning because the meaning is very very serious. If eternity is real and it certainly seems to me now that it is. And all the things that were written need to be reconsidered at least. And I am giving them a lot of weight as being true. Because everything I found, the giants were in the earth in those days. All these things were basically marginally correct, as far as I can tell. Now, like I say, I don't think every single creature on the face of the planet was wiped off. Not according to Velikovsky's account. And he was the one that went through all of the ancient, ancient, ancient texts. The Bible is more recent compared to what Velikovsky's work was. All right, I am a little bit biased because Velikovsky is my hero. Worlds in Collision is his book about what happened and caused a cataclysm on Earth. And he was destroyed for it. I wrote a book called um, Mud Fossils and Velikovsky and Minds in Collision. He's my hero. I am doing some research right now on what all the Sumerian had to say. And then about Velikovsky's account, 1500 B.C. and the, between the Greeks and the Egyptians, the differences they had in their religious practices and so forth. And then the chaos and all the different things that happened on Earth. And so I got a lot of research that I'm, I'm working on right now to get to a point where I understand this stuff. Now, this is Velikovsky's account of work that he did. He went everywhere in the world and got the stories. Now, I'm going to come down to where, down here, he says, I found confirmed in many ancient sources, and he, like I say, he went everywhere around the world, in which Saturn is regularly associated with brilliant light. Now, how he got to Saturn, I, I think he said it was Venus, but he's talking about Saturn here. This is another thing I have to re resolve. I don't know for sure exactly whether it was Saturn or Venus, but I've always believed it was Venus that was ejected by Jupiter, the feared god Jupiter sent Venus out to impact Earth to cause this flood. Anyway, he said he was led to this idea by a certain clue contained in the biblical account of the deluge. The story is found in the book of Genesis. starts with the words, And it came to pass after seven days, this is what we just walked, and the waters of the flood were upon the Earth. It's not explained after seven days of what exactly. Well, in these ancient texts, though, they talk about seven days of light. Okay, it is clear, however, Isaiah refers to the same seven days in the Messianic age to come, when the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of the seven days. 
All right. And this is what they said. Venus was approaching Earth, and it got hotter and hotter and hotter. And then eventually the, the waters boiled. The Earth just wrenched. The depths of the Earth were all watery hot. The Quran talks about it. They boiled the waters from under the Earth. Now, with the end of the seven days of light, the Earth became enveloped in waters of cosmic origin. That's when the, the atmospheres collided. And he, he says the same thing. It formed from clouds of hydrogen gas ejected by the nova, which combined by means of powerful electric discharges with the Earth's own free oxygen. There are definite indications of a drastic drop in atmospheric oxygen at the time of the deluge. Now, again, this, they were survivors. It said the survivors of the catastrophe are said in several sources to have been unable to light fires. He says the survivors in several sources. Now, I, he was a trustworthy guy. I don't think he's lying. All right? Now, I can't discount that 100%, but I... I don't, you know, I think he he put sources to all of these things that he never made statements he couldn't back up with without papyruses or glyphs or something. So he says the survivors said they couldn't start fires. There's just not enough oxygen to combust well. The Medrashim and other ancient sources describe the waters of the flood as being warm. Some say they were boiling. In addition, the waters may have been rich in chlorine and salt, which is, that's from all the bodies of the creatures, and then creating the red beds, which is nothing more than the flesh. Now, marine geologists unable to trace the origin of human amounts of these salts, which are from bodies being boiled. Uh, now, after the deluge, many new forms of life came into being. Did they really, or were they here? I don't know. Anyway especially plant life. Thus it happened that Saturn was later called a god of vegetation. Fraser in his golden bow considered Osiris and Tammuz to be nothing more than vegetation gods. So strong was Saturn's connection with the new forms in the plant kingdom it appeared follow, that appeared following the deluge. Now then you also say the, the Midrashic, Midrashic sources relate that during the deluge all volcanoes erupted that's what caused the black cap on top of the red bed and the gray clay so the red bed is the flesh the gray clay is the marrow in between it's the organs it's the bony parts the stuff that is tendonish stuff and then on top of that came the red bed and i have that i have it here with the, a, a human footprint stuck right in the middle as it was happening. So it all happened the same day. And this is exactly what it says here. Valkowski said the same thing. They erupted all the volcanoes erupted. Other ancient accounts assert the same. So there's not just one. And he, he had always backed up more than one account. Changes took place in the, the lithosphere, the biosphere, but mostly was in the hydrospheres of waters. Huge volumes of water on the earth was vastly increased. And it is of interest that they call the Atlantic Ocean, called the ancients called the Sea of Kronos. This was still all gods and things back then at this time. The gods were real. They were interacting. They were here. Now, whether they just left and said, these people are crazy, I don't know what, what happened after, after these events. But they were, as far as I'm concerned, these gods were real. The earth was constructed of creatures. There were giants on the earth. And then there was a flood, all stated pretty damn accurate to me.